look in the mirror Man, you so dirty Yeah, you look so dirty You were never worthy Lately, it's Welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show. If you're easily triggered, leave now because this is not the show for you. Now, what I'm going to discuss in this situation that we talk about today, I'm going to get on Mr. P. Dickey again. Um, you know, more interesting developments have come out about this man. They have found over 700 dildos in this raid. And then I'm going to talk about the book that Kim Porter was putting out before she passed, which was his ex-wife and baby mama from Correct. That details the horrible things that he did. And then we're going to pull up some of Cassie. You know, all those nasty little pictures that was leaked. And I'm going to have a couple celebrities talk about what they encountered when they was dealing with P. Dickey. Hold on one second. I'll get it on your screen, man. Hope y'all had a good weekend, man. All right, now. Hope y'all ready for this one today because if it get crazy, we about to go in. No ditty. 784 male-shaped toys. Do you have any idea what that looks like? Well, I'm gonna show you because that's apparently how many of those they pulled out of the raid, no pun intended, um, on Diddy's house when they also found the thousand bottles of lubricant and baby oil. Now my favorite part- There's the picture for I let them continue. And this is for educational purposes. I want you to take a look at all those things that you put in a man or a woman, man. It was at his place along with the baby oil and the lubricant. Now let us continue with the story. Now, my favorite part of this is that they found all of these and they're like, photo op. And I feel like this guy and this guy are doing their best to not crack a smile. And look, the situation is not funny. It really is quite serious, but this is a ridiculous amount of these. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a resurfaced clip because apparently Diddy has been telling us what he's been doing for years. Just take a listen. No, no, I don't know if guys have noticed this. Like a lot of ladies drink water at parties. They right. just, you know, so you have, if you don't have what they need, they're going to leave. Right, gotta right. keep them there. Right, you need, you need locks on the doors. <laughs> okay, this but, is sounding kind of dangerous now. It's a little kinky, but yeah, you know, yeah. Broccoli, but just right. Check it out. You need um a lot of heat. A lot heat. Of heat. Yeah. Heat. You mean that physically the place has to be hot? You don't have no air conditioning. No air conditioning. No. Why is that? Heat affects the alcohol, and it also. This is when you feel untouchable, man. You are so untouchable in your mind that you become sloppy. That you start giving out little details about the wickedness that you have been participating in or orchestrating out there. Okay. This is when you think you are bulletproof and that you knowing is that's called dry snitching. You're telling on yourself, but he's but it's right. He's been dropping little bitty pieces of information about what type of man he is for years. Just no one no one really paid attention to it, I guess. So facts like um, you know, everybody gets a little bit more comfortable and loose. Builds up a nice Guys, this is all still just the tip of the iceberg. I actually have a lot more videos to make and a lot more to show you. I just ran out of time. Yep, we ain't done yet. I want to show you that first so you know I'm, I'm backing up everything I say as usual. Now, what I'm going to show you now is, uh, where is it at? If you don't remember Shine, he used to be a bad boy artist back in the day, okay? I think his name is Moses Barrow. He had a number one record, um... He used to try to rap like Biggie Smalls and stuff, but this is him now. He had cleaned up. He did some time. Puff Daddy, or he was Puff Daddy at the time, did him dirty, sent people in to get him convicted to do the time for him. He got released, and then next thing you know, he's a politician, all right? He didn't look at it. You won't even recognize him anymore. So let me go ahead and play him right quick so he can tell you what happened between him and P. Dickey. One second. I was defending him, and he turned around and called witnesses to testify against me. And he contributed, he pretty much sent me to prison. So that is the context by which you must always describe that relationship. Yes, I forgave, I moved on, did not do any business. You said he helped fund your political enterprise. I never said that. I said that he proposed to give the Howard Scholarship, which is what I do in all realms, this was not someone uh, who I vacationed with and who he and I enjoyed this great intimate relationship of brotherhood. This is someone who destroyed my life and who I forgave and who I moved on and for don't distort it as if 
you know, he and I were boom uh, This is someone that destroyed my life. <laughs> but you're aware of the free cops. Because so I, I, I had nothing to do with Sean Combs' uh, personal life, no interaction. That level, everything was strictly on a professional level. Now, think about that now. The P. Diddy been a backstabbing dude all his time on this planet, man. But it's up to me to just show you the facts, man. As outrageous and as crazy as my sound. Now, let me go ahead and get into Kim Porter, if I'm saying her name right, um, which was um her ex, his ex, baby mama and wife, if I'm correct. She mysteriously, in quotations, mysteriously died from pneumonia. But it's always been rumored that he has uh had a hand in her passing away. But what happened was she wrote some memoirs and she was intending to publish it and use it as a, as a form of blackmail to get away from him. But before that ever happened, she died. Well, now guess what? Those memoirs are becoming public now. And you're going to be knocked out when Candace Owens tells you the details of it. Let's get going. Porter alleges that she, when she discovered those videotapes of Sean and his sexual encounters in the bedroom in this vault, she made copies of them as protection for herself. Realized that this is a very dangerous situation. I'm gonna make copies for protection for myself and included it as a part of her plan to leave him. But the memoir says that when she watched back the tapes, she was so shocked because there were things, quote, some of the tapes had things I would have never expected. The gay parties are one thing, but the young boys, like the two hip hop stars formerly managed by Diddy and the then 18 year old pop star, I would have never known. Now, if you want to know who she's talking about, she is definitely talking about Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber has been um, alleged sucking off Diddy for a long time. Uh, he was caught in a party. I can't remember it was Trey Songz. See, I can remember it was Trey Songz, somebody and some sports figure. And they caught him. What looks like he was giving that boy fellatio. Um, Bieber was giving this man. I don't got that clip. I'll play it next time. But um, yeah, so that's what she's talking about. Let's keep going. The book publisher is claiming that it was the friends that gave him this thumbnail, friends that provided this memoir. The friends also provided copies of these alleged sex tapes so that he knew that it was legitimate. And the final entry of the memoir from Kim Porter before she mysteriously got pneumonia and didn't survive it as a 47 year old is her dramatically telling her friends quote he got me he got me so kim was suggesting that p diddy or p dicky was trying to get him coming to get him now let's cover the nasty you know candace right um uh, what's it um can't remember her name cassie cassie yeah about them nasty pictures of her getting penetrated, going around and stuff. It's crazy, man. But guess who going to talk about it? The big homie, 50 Cent. Let's get it. Man, I don't know. I don't know. I know. I know. Check this out. On, on the up and up, the n fuck, like, he called. We should kick it on the telephone and shit after the major Right, right. And, and the nigga be like, matter of fact, they sent me the girl pictures. Like, pictures of this girl, like. Not the shit that y'all saw. Worse. Way worse. Wow. <laughs> Are you kidding me, yo? Like penetration pictures and... and nah, come on, man. Come on, Phil. <laughs> all that. And I didn't even... I didn't even... I called the nigga. I said, yo, you really... You with this girl? Like, you really... Like, you like her? Like that? And he was like, yeah. That's, that's my girl. I'm like, all right. I'm going to send you something. You look at it. You call me back. Yeah, I man. sent him the photos, the pictures and everything. <laughs> And the nigga called back and was like, yo, thanks, man. Boss, man. Yo, I really appreciate that. Yo, where you get these shits from? <laughs> and I said, you know, like, because they know, like, if something crazy is going on, if they send it to me, I'm a, I'll make sure I get out there. Like, as far as this video.com is concerned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and those other properties. So they sent it to me. <laughs> but, you know, I really, I really kind of felt like those photographs were not happening because of Cassie, I felt like that was happening because of Puffy. So, I'm not going to go with what were the pictures about. They are what they are. Mm -hmm. What, like, clearly, I guess the, the, the thing I want to know is who, I was told they were leaked, true or false. True. Not by you, right? Not by me. Definitely not by me. Do you know who did it, or do you have an idea? Um, we're 
closer to an idea of who did it, yeah. It's it's being somewhat investigated. I mean, I'm really supposed to talk about it like that. Right. But, um, yeah, I think we're close to finding out who it was. 50 Cent suggested that it was actually P. Diddy himself just to do something, you know, mean and being, you know how they say Diddy is. They also, um, I got some other stuff to prove about it, that I believe person that he had something to do with Tupac's um, passing away, but there's more evidence coming out saying that he actually may have did that. I have to bring that to you another day. Mm, excuse me right quick as I put up something else for you. Now, we're going to talk about Mary J. Blige. I think she's on them tapes. Now, I want you to understand something. A lot of people's at these parties, and they were being recorded without their permission, okay? So, it's amazing how everybody was on his side when he threw all these damn parties, but as soon as this stuff came out, everybody got quiet, and they all began to slowly pull out. No ditty. So, let's go ahead and um, get into this thing about Mary J. Blige being a pedophile, just like um, P. Dickey is, and her victim's going to talk about it. Let's get it. Mary J. Blige is allegedly on a freak off tape with Diddy. It's been going around all over TikTok that Mary J. Blige is in a freak off tape with Diddy and she's saying that this was her rite of passage. And a lot of people have always wondered about Mary J. Blige and they feel like she is in on some shit because she has never opened her mouth and she has been with Diddy since the very beginning. And there are a lot of photos on the internet with Mary J. Blige with Cassie and as you can see during these photos Cassie has visible bruises on her body. Now all this information with Mary J. Blige allegedly being in a freak off tape with Diddy instantly made me think of Danny boy. Mary J. Blige slept with a 15 year old Danny boy when she was 24 years old and Danny boy admitted yep. that Mary J. Blige would fly him out to New York multiple different times. 15, 16 years old and she flying me in to see her and uh, you know what it is when a girl back up on you and you young and shit and I'm trying to show her that she ain't phasing me. I'm hard as goddamn... <laughs> She's backing up against me. This Mary J. Blige. And uh, quite nicely got me. You know, I don't even know if you're supposed to say you had. You're supposed to say you had some people on camera. I had an opportunity to go out to New York and visit her a couple more times. And then after all of this information started coming out that Mary J. Blige is allegedly in this freak off tape with Diddy, I started thinking about the time that Danny Boy said when he was a teenager, he had relationships with men that were in the closet that were singers and producers in the industry. And Danny Boy was asked when he said this, was this somebody at death row? Because at the time he was with death row and he said, hell no, this is something that he knew to keep about himself in the closet because you could never let Suge find out about this and it was nobody like Suge Knight would have stumped that boy out you represent death row <laughs> closet because you could never let Suge find out about this and it was nobody like that inside death row so this really has me thinking did Mary J Blige and Diddy do a freak off with Danny Boy is this who Danny Boy is talking about I mean he admitted to sleeping with Mary J Blige when he was 15 years old and said that Mary J Blige flew him to New York multiple different times and said at the same time during his teenage years which would be 15 16 17 years old he was having relationships with men who were in the closet and they were acting like they were straight and in this interview clip that I'm about to show you of Danny Boy he also also explained how these people have never came out of the closet. You cannot tell me that this man was not talking about Diddy. Like, this is some crazy shit. I thought it was bad enough that Mary J. Blige messed with the 15-year-old Danny boy, but now the connections are starting to fall in line. But I'm going to go ahead and roll you guys this clip of Danny boy explaining how he was having relationships with people in the industry who were basically in the closet and never told the truth about themselves. And you guys let me know what do you guys think. Do you guys think that Danny boy was somebody that was involved in these freak off? as a kid in my teen years you know I, I did i did some things with you know between me and the homies you know and um it would be considered gay but those guys are straight guys now and in the relationships so they say <laughs> i mean but they're in relationships now so i'm the only one that kind of came out was some of these individuals that you was messing around with you know around that time when you was on death row was they in the industry yeah I thought he was going to say what they on death row. Yeah, that was in the industry. Who else was I hanging around? I wasn't just hanging around with people in regular neighborhoods. Who was they on death row? Nah, look at them, though. I mean, <laughs> no offense, but nah. No, yuck. I don't know. Like, I don't, they went with me. No. 
that wasn't a thing. It wasn't like an open thing that it even then. It, you know, even me having the feelings, it was suppressed because that was a thing that I, I knew not to take around Suge. Like I said, Suge gonna stump a mud hole in your ass. <laughs> We're gonna play that. But uh, I got one more thing to show you before we get out of here. Some more intimate, outrageous details of what's gonna be in that book. You can order it. Uh, that was written by the late um, Kim Porter. It's going to talk about the type of dildos that P. Diddy prefer to get put on him because he love how it feels, because he P. Dicky. And they're going to talk about, um, you know, I'm going to let her say it, man. It's just some sickening ass shit to me. I don't even talk about it. Let's get it. Not in Kim Porter's book, she said Diddy wanted extra large sex toys used on him. He wanted the toys that were so big that it would make him bleed. <laughs> when I tell y'all, y'all think it's a game. When Diddy really get off his high horse being locked up, y'all, he's going to be running that jail. Y'all think he had all of these um, orgy parties and all of that when he was a free man? The fact that he's going to have real deal and those in, in the jail, the real ones, the real big ones, the real suppressed ones that they have the urge to have snacks because they ain't been having it because they in it locked up yeah did he gonna did he gonna have a ball man <laughs> they are all over p diddy boy <laughs> boy boy he ain't getting no rest man they ain't getting what's so sad here his sons his children they'll never live this shit out they're gonna take two or three generations for this the sting of this to go by because them sons they was there they knew what was going on too but they always gonna be known for the next 15 years as the children of the monster. You, you get what I'm saying? Boy, it's crazy. They finna pay for the sins of their daddy. And I do believe that they were also was involved with some of that stuff, too, to be honest with you. The uh, You know which ones I'm talking about. The old ones, the younger ones. Hell, I don't know. But anyway, you let me know what you think about this, man. And be careful. No diddy. <laughs> Ooh, 